Hello, welcome to the Five Book Chats. And today I have a guest from Barcelona, and with me is Steve Tashira. And you are the design knitwear designer from Barcelona, but you don't do the conventional stuff. You do an avant-garde stuff. Well, some of it nowadays. Let's go back to like where you started. How old were you like when you started, when you learned how to knit? When I learned how to knit, it was a teen I was a teenager. Uh, and after years uh, of trying to convince my grandmother to teach me, she finally agreed, but in secret. <laughs> uh, we have to keep it in secret. But uh, crochet, uh, we learned it in the school, in primary school. They, they made us do chain stitches with, with the crochet and then glue, it, glue them to make drawings. Okay. It was the begin my beginnings on crochet. <laughs> do you still, like, do you prefer knitting over crochet or you go between the two of them? Definitely, I'd rather to knit the, than crochet, yeah. Because you like the fabric that you receive better, like? Yeah, because crochet, it, it tends to be thicker. Thicker. And, right. And I'd rather, it's, it's more... I don't know how to say it. it's yeah. right. It's all right. Right. Yeah. Um, so you kept like your knitting. You had to keep your knitting in secret from like everybody in your family, or was it like just not acceptable in general in in Spain at that time? It was not so so uh, so regular to, to see boys knitting. Right. Uh, so my my grandma make me promise that I won't tell anybody because uh, she was uh, worried that maybe she my, my parents will be mad at her or something. How to... did your parents react like when they learned that you need how what was their reaction? No, it was no problem. Okay. They, they, they had no problem at all. <laughs> no, it's so my, my, my grandma was afraid for nothing. <laughs> no, it's interesting. I was interviewing Luis Boria yesterday and he said this thing. So they took picture of him knitting on the train and that picture went viral. And then that's how he basically became famous. And he said that like his first time pulling his knitting out in public on the train, he was so afraid of how people around him going to react. But then nobody reacted and he's like i realized that it was all in my head it was all like i was afraid of it and not uh how people in reality reacted to that so sometimes you know we think that the reaction is going to be worse than it is yeah in fact the, the my first post i i didn't dare to show my face uh, i always cut it off because i was so ashamed uh but but then some guy told me you should show your face you don't should be ashamed and, and right. there we go <laughs> well i'm glad that guy told you to do that <laughs> i'm glad, to get I'm glad to to your face. so let's talk about you had um a vogue uh knitting fashion show you were part of the fashion show how did that happen they made it an open contest to amateur knitters and uh, we have to send uh, three pieces, pictures of three pieces, and and they had a, had the jury and they decided uh, oh. that I was one of the finalists. Was it hard for you to pick the pieces? Was it hard for you to decide what to send them because you have so many different yeah. pieces? Yeah, because to send some pieces to Vogue, uh, it's like wow, they they are really. Uh, the, the the top dogs of the of the of the fashion so why should i send them but they like that it seems so, so how did you decide what did you send was what were the items that you sent for the uh, uh, i sent the the rope sweater the uh, a sweater that is made from rope i sent uh, one sweater that is called uh, love uh, amongst the sailors Mm -hmm. that it's uh, very like I don't that? know how to say uh, like I, I will send you a picture later sure and and what what else I can't recall now <laughs> but you were trying to like show different variations of what you can make or were they similar uh, it, they were different to to show them all 
all the things that I can do. Right. Um, do you have like a favorite kind of design, like something that makes you feel happy? Like, is there something that you keep coming back to? Or like, do you need something absolutely new every single time you do that? Uh, I like a lot to make the fade isol sweaters. I like them a lot. I think that it's the perfect garment. But I, I like to try to make different different stuff all the time because it, it has to have has some bar variety. Uh, variety. How to say? Variety. Variety. Right. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you're thinking of writing a book of your designs. Um, mm. What do you put in your notes? Is that like detailed description of every stitch or do you put ideas? How does your notebook look like? Well, my notebook is a mess, <laughs> a completely <laughs> mess. Artistic mess, right? Sometimes, yeah, but sometimes I, I try to reread it and I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> or even you so... yourself don't understand it. No, th this is an advice for for uh, all the new designers there. Uh, please write down as you need because if not, uh, to make the pattern, it's something like you postpose and postpose, and you, you never. I I, I, could, I never did them. Right. Well, ho I hope that one day soon you're gonna put it all in order of some sort and publish that book because that would be wonderful. Um, the, in Barcelona nowadays, is there a knitting circle like that you have of your other male knitters that you meet with, you knit together? Is that is that became more acceptable than when you were growing up? Yeah, there are some uh, different groups of knitters, and and I started one also uh, where I teach for free, uh, but. Uh, I, I think that it's very okay that the guys need nowadays, but I don't think that it's so uh, right to to meet only guys there. I think that the meetings should be for everybody. Right. So and... let's talk about those classes that you teach. So I saw on your website that you can just make appointment. Anybody can make appointment with you and just meet on for a one on one class and it's free. What was your thinking behind that? Like, why did you decide to do that? Because, uh, like a Spider-Man says, everyone, everybody gets one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nowadays, uh, everybody's doing. Nobody's doing anything for free, right. and and I think it's it's it should be nice to meet another person that he wants to meet and he had a problem at him. It's it's okay because uh, when when my grandma died, to learn the the other things only from the books, and if somebody could help me that this time, right. uh, I will be so thankful. So I try to to be a help some, to to people. So when you do those classes, is that a way for you to meet new people as well? Because like it's it's on your website, so it's like anybody can do this, uh, like book those classes, right? Really, I like to meet people that that they like to to meet, and it's so enriching. Uh, it enriches to meet people and 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 share thoughts. Right, and then so when when you started knitting, and I saw that on your Instagram, your first knitted items were more conservative, like more traditional. You had like the Fair Isle sweaters, and then from that you went like completely avant-garde. So when people come to your one-on-one -on -one cl free class, do they expect you to teach them something like traditional technique, like how to knit and purl, or do they want to know how you make sweater like you're wearing right now? Mm, unfortunately, they, they want to make the classic stuff, but... I try to convince them to to move to the dark side. <laughs> oh, you know, if I'm ever in Barcelona, we knitting that thank you wearing. <laughs> I'm gonna make that appointment. I wanna know how to make that. Forget about classic stuff. Um, so when you um, 
do you sell your do you sell things you make is there a market unfortunately unfortunately i i haven't sell anything yet is that something you want to yes of course okay i'm going to invite you to the facebook group it's called knitters gonna knit where we encourage all the artists to advertise their work whether it's designs or finished items or whatever and who knows maybe you'll sell something <laughs> i'm gonna send wow. an invitation. that would be great <laughs> yeah let's, that would be great let's expand your market you know that the, 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 the big problem with the pieces that with the knitted pieces is that they are really expensive in time right so now i'm trying i'm trying to design a very fast pieces with the to to reduce the the, the price and maybe get affordable pieces like for like like 50 euros or 40 i don't know maybe that more affordable for people this is art that shouldn't be cheap you know you think <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you don't go and buy painting of Picasso for twenty dollars, right? You expect to pay the price because he's Picasso. No, but but, that, but they are, but they are really, really easy pieces and and really simple pieces. So, right, that, but that, like, that you need in two days. So, it, but it's your idea behind it. You know, it's like there is the this famous painting. It's just a black square. And you can say, well, anybody can make black square. And that's true. But yes, but that's the guy who thought about making black square. So you are the guy who thought about making all these amazing designs, you know? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have favorite material that you need from? Like, do, do you have a favorite kind of yarn that you make majority of your stuff from? Uh, yes, uh, polyamide. I like it a lot. Is the, uh, the the shiny polyamide that and and it's so soft and silky to the touch because when when you need you you know it's a, like a caress in your your fingers. Uh, yeah. That's the stuff I sent to Vogue uh, for the fashion show the the red one and the polyamide, but also I like a lot uh, the mohair, mm -hmm. and I like a lot the mohair. It's it's a very interesting uh, fiber. Do you have any favorite places in Barcelona where you buy yarn? Uh, well, the, my favorite shop, it burned. Uh, oh. It was set on fire. So now I go to a, an Asia, Asian bazaar. Uh, I don't know how it's called. Right, market. <laughs> they yeah. have a really good stuff there because they have uh, yarns from good, uh, good brands that... Uh, that it's from other uh, collections and so they are cheap. Right. Um, so what's your plans for the future? Like, what do you plan to do, let's say this year? Uh, what, what I intended to do is to, to make this line of cheap uh, garments to start selling and, and start saving because my, my, my big plan is to get a cabin in the woods, in the mountain and, and and uh, have a little garden for the vegetables and all the stuff and, and to knit, it's my plan. Right. <laughs> so how, how do you feel like COVID affected your life this year as a designer? Was it? Yeah, yeah it affected a lot because I, I had, uh, I had uh, so, so many students and with the COVID, uh, I, lost all, I lost them all. <laughs> I only have the ones in the in the free meetings now. You like big on Instagram. Do you meet new people there? Like, is that why you're doing Instagram? Like, what was the idea behind you opening Instagram account? It was to see if uh, to to show my creations and to have some feedback. And what uh, was the feedback? Uh, well. I, I, I cannot say it was very, very good, but it's surprising that some people like what I do and, and it's very encouraging. I don't know what you're talking about because every single person, when, I, when we agreed that we're going to do this uh, interview, I sent your profile to everybody I know and I was like, oh my God, look at this guy, like, look what he's doing. And everybody was blown away. 
Do you find other artists that do similar stuff? Did you ever find somebody who is like, you were like, oh, it's the same aesthetics, it's the same sense of fashion that I have? Uh, yeah, this is this guy in Chile uh, that it's called uh, Ingrato. Uh, it blows my mind every time. <laughs> yeah. I like him a lot. Yeah, yeah. So do you get to talk to each other about like what he's designing, what you're designing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it's a, a really long time we didn't write to each other. But also Louis from uh, Brooklyn Boy Knits. Right. He also is a very, very sweet guy. And, and I meet him in, in New York. And he it, it also, it's a very big hearted guy. <laughs> he is. Yeah, I was interviewing him yesterday, actually. It was like really fun interview because he gives so much back to community. And I think like this is what you and him have in common, like this, this whole idea of giving, you know, free classes and giving back to the community. Like he has the same thing with the program that he does. It's a very good person. I like him a lot. Do you um do you see like do you do you see boys nowadays or men nowadays knitting is it like becoming more acceptable to knit in public or to knit in general for a man in, in Spain? I didn't see any guy in the street knitting, but uh, there is a, 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 a boys meeting uh, that it's called Barcelona Tejidos that they meet uh, in one shop, and, but I don't know if they do it in public. But uh, two of my students, they are not ashamed at all and, and they meet everywhere. <laughs> do you get like, when you, you need in public, right? I saw your pictures on Instagram that you need outside. Yes, 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 so I, don't, when, I don't. When you need outside, what? how do people react? Like, is it more like, curious or is there like any hostility there like what what do you get what sense of reaction you get they they are amazed some and surprised the people and and they come to talk <laughs> if you are in a bench in a park they, they come to talk to to you all, all the time <laughs> so do you show your designs like do you show what you're working on do you talk? <laughs> No, no, no. I only show what I have in, in... I don't want to be a poser and, and see, see what I do, see, see what I do. <laughs> I'll do that for you. I'm going to be showing your design. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they'll market you. If you don't want to talk about Thank it, you. they'll talk about them. <laughs> do, you, um, do, you, do you wear your own stuff all the time? Like, do you need it and then you wear it on the streets? I never wear my pieces. Seriously? Um, seriously. <laughs> Why not? I don't dare. So you're afraid of the reaction, uh, of the public reaction? Uh, because I, I make them because I like them, but I, I, I will never wear them because I'm a very classic uh, guy, very trendy. Right. And always with jeans and a polo and... You know, do you have any other hobbies besides, like, I saw that you do some stuff with the music? Yeah, yeah, I like to make music and also I like to draw, but it seems that uh, I'm not a good musician. <laughs> I'm not a good drawer, <laughs> but, uh, but, but I, I can defend myself in knitting. <laughs> my, my music is there in the uh, internet for free because I, I thought that music should be free. Right. Uh, the musicians should be doing music because they want to make something beautiful, you know, thinking about how they can gain, gain a lot of money. So the last con collection that you have called The Devil Has Needs for Idle Hands. Why did you call it that? <laughs> because I, I like a lot this, uh, this uh, The Devil Has Needs for Idle Hands. It has uh, Needs for Idle Hands. It's right. a very funny phrase and I, and I adapted to Needs. Because it's like uh, the devil is it's making me make the mistakes and all the stuff and, and make it more arty. So when you need your stuff, let's say like the sweater that you're wearing, right? How do you decide the placement of the holes? 
Yeah, I will how to decide it. You you have you, when you design you you know how many points you will have, so you make a map. Uh, it's like a, a a map of squares, and you there put in uh, in the squares where it should you draw where the the holes should be. In the beginning, it was uh, let's see how how it goes. But sometimes you see that the hole there it's not okay, and and here it's not okay. So I thought no, you shouldn't do it randomly. It should be uh, placed strategically. Uh, how to say organized and think. Of, and... So I saw this picture on your Instagram where you were kneading the spaghetti, and then you were kneading this fake ivy and you were kneading underwater and behind your back and like with one arm. Tell me a little bit about those pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wanted to bring a little show to my profile, like a, a circus or <laughs> Entertainment. A, a, knitting, a knitting circus. Also, I, I tried to knit uh, different uh, materials or fibers like the, the EV, because I, I want to try how they look when they are needed and if it's possible to make a garment after after this to, but uh, they are materials that they are they are not affordable for me right now but someday I, I will I will do them and knitting under water it was for a contest uh, uh, of a shop in Barcelona that they wanted some to send us pictures uh, knitting in bizarre places and, and I did, and I say I know the water is the bizarrest place for uh, I thought. Right. <laughs> but I didn't want the contest, unfortunately. So who, who won them? Where did they film it? It, it, uh, it win a, a girl that was knitting inside a camp, a tent. Uh, I don't know how it's called. How is that more bizarre than water? <laughs> I would have won. Remember, you. <laughs> I'm a pariah, remember. <laughs> you should have won that one. Was it very difficult to like hold your breath on the water while you're knitting? How many <laughs> how many times did you have to record it? Yeah, several times, several times. <laughs> so who, because, was, uh, who was filming you? Uh, it, it, it's a uh, underwater camera. It's uh, a little underwater camera. The, the difficult part was uh, to stay down because uh, right, the, the body down. tends to, to go up. Right. But it was fun. <laughs> so and and then the knitting behind your back or knitting with one arm it was also part of that contest no it was trying uh, my skills i was i was i was getting my skills and and try right but knitting with knitting with what with one arm and crocheting with one arm it's because uh, i have a student uh, that uh, he, she only can move one one and I, and I have to teach her to, to knit with a good hand. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So you like you taught yourself how to do it in order to teach her. Very yep. Interesting. <laughs> um, when we first talk and I told you that I've been to Barcelona, your first question was like, how was the food? <laughs> and I noticed it a lot about like people from <laughs> Barcelona. Everybody was like very patriotic, very proud to be Catalanian and very proud about the food. What's your favorite food? What do you like to eat? Oh, well, there are, there are so many good things here, but uh, tortilla de patatas, it's a, a very nice thing. When I was in Barcelona with my daughter, we actually took a cooking class and the first dish we made was the uh, potato uh, omelette. Yeah, so it's, you know, I'm, they, you know, I know how to make that actually. <laughs> we went to the market uh -huh. and we got all the food. You surprised me. Yeah, no, I love cooking. And so like we have this thing where we used to go, like we went one time to Italy and we took cooking classes. And uh, two years ago, we went to Barcelona. And the first thing we did, we registered for cooking class and we went to the local market, uh, bought like all the seafood and the rice and the ve vegetables. And then we went to this little cooking studio and we made like different kinds of tapas. And we also made paella. 
with, with like different fresh seafood catch of the day. So it was like really fun experience for me. Wow, paella, it's so good. <laughs> um, when you came to New York, how is it different from Barcelona? How did you, did you like New York? Was it overwhelming? Wow. <laughs> Wow, yeah, it was overwhelming uh, because you see it so many times in movies and but you never get the picture. There, it's, it's incredible. It's a huge city and it's incredible how, how big it is. Yeah. And so, but I didn't have so many time to visit and, and I hope sometime I, I, I will come back. Well, thank you so very much for being my guest today. And I loved getting to know you better. And I hope next time in Barcelona, you'll take me to some uh, good places to eat. <laughs> yeah, and to eat. <laughs> and to eat, yeah, we'll need, and we'll need together. You can, I'm gonna book that uh, free class and, and you're gonna teach me how to knit the sweater with holes in it. None of that. And let's cook together also. <laughs> Right.